asked you to stay home so you can travel later. You heeded the call for the greater good, for the preservation of life. And you did it all with the promise that in Lingilan, we get back together again. Well, the day has finally come. We asked you to stay, now come out and play. Yumela, so observe your protocol, ba. So, Zwaga. Tati shot left to that adventure weekend away in gang. Enjoy lunch on a rooftop in the hustle and bustle of your city once again. Take a drive down to the coast. Ah, can you smell that sea breeze? See you, Makris, and reconnect with the family. Remember that vacation you've been promising? Don't you want to make reservations? It's time to travel again. As the tourism sector reopens, you too must play your part. Remember too, wear your masks, sanitize, keep washing your hands regularly, social distance. Let's see you once again in Zanzi, traveling safely, enjoying and exploring your country freely and confidently. Spring has finally sprung, and we can finally celebrate warmer days and brighter colors without the threat of yet another cold front looming. That's great news for everyone, because it means that intimate heritage day brides are a go. Now speaking of heritage, this week on Trends Travel, we continue to explore the many different cultures and traditions found in our truly rainbow nation. We continue to celebrate Heritage Month, profiling different cultures and traditions that make South Africa what it is, a rainbow nation. So this time we took our cameras to Guamai Mai, downtown Johannesburg, a fascinating marketplace that provides important insight of indigenous knowledge. And our focus was on the Zulu culture. The Zulu nation prides itself with its beautiful, bright cultural attire, unique dance, and the rich history. My name is Michelle Zama. Celebrating Heritage Month today, we are at Gomai Mai where we are showcasing our traditional Zulu attire. Please follow me. First look was this traditional female wedding attire. I am in a traditional Zulu bridal attire. So this is called Ingetli, um, a headpiece which is worn by the bride-to-be. It's called Ingetli, it's also known as Isitoko. This is known as Izinyembezi, which, um, which complements Ingetli or Isitoko as I've explained. This is, um, it's called Iwisa, um, it's, it's also a part of Ushoba. So it's just to give your attire a little bit more oomph. This is Imbata. Um, in most cases, in most cases, Sigbonne would go away a course when you are a chief or in Bosi, Imbata betrayed to go away a Makos or a chief. But in our modern days, we see um, brides now adopting um, the culture of wearing Imbata. Ushalu, um, Obu Kowala, Indanyeni which is just really um, supporting all the other colorful beads. Um, Ipimifa is a piece of beads um, sewn in a particular design. It goes on top of Isidwaba and it's just uh, to give Isidwaba some life and some culture because traditionally Isidwaba is usually plain black and it's, it's usually made from leather. The one I'm wearing is made from a very special fabric. It is not leather. This one is a bit light to wear. Below Amabande, I've got Ufa, I'm, I'm wearing Ufa Tlawana, uh, which is worn around the ankle area. And so it's, it's got a bit of sound. So, so mouse on again, oh my god, in my legs, I'm going to get on again, you like my god. Now, this attire is worn only by young girls. On my head, I have umkele, which is usually made from animal skin, mostly worn by men of any age. There is no age restriction, and this accessory is unisexual, meaning that both men and women are allowed or can be seen wearing umkele. And then on my wrist, I have amabengele. I don't have the cultural name for amabengele, 
but it is just beautifully crafted and designed uh, small beads which also form part of this beautiful attire covering my chest area I'm wearing a beautifully beaded bra now below this I'm wearing what is known as isigege or umam dindi it is worn by young girls um, a lot of times you'll see this when girls go to the red dance mabeyem shangeni bakoga umam dindi so now you can pick up the difference between Umam Dindi and Isidwara. Oh, <laughs> It wouldn't be a fully Zulu experience if it didn't show you the traditional male gear. Right here we have Upgobo, right? This is called Ubugobo, right? And this is known as Imbata. It is very popular um, amongst uh, Amakosi or Ingosi. Uh, it is uh, worn by a chief and it is called Imbata, right? This is known as Ikono and it is worn on both arms as you can see, all right? And this is known as Upgingo right so it's called upkingo now this here is called isinene all right and i want to explain the difference so is isinene covers the front section of of the male delicate parts while ipeshu is the piece that goes to the back this is ipeshu it goes it covers the back part of of of, of the body and isine isinene covers the front part right now this is known as injobo there's a zulu saying that um, that goes by Injobo Itungelwe Ebanda. So when they talk about Injobo, this is what they are talking about. Okay. Um, this is called Isquili, which is also which also can be used as a weapon because if you take a closer look, it is really really sharp and it can cause some damage to your uh, rivalry. Okay. It is called Isquili. All right. Now this is known as Ihau. Um, if you watch your Shaka Zulu movies, you. Might might have seen this a lot it is ihau and this here is called ubu kobo and it just it forms part of ihau as a whole but this section is known as ubu kobo and this is ihau in english it's called a shield ihau well i hope this has been informative and you've learned a thing or two about our traditional zulu attire thank you for joining us i will must Coming up after the break, we mix some heritage with some tourism, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, do remember that if you've missed any of our episodes, you can catch up on YouTube or you can send us a message on Instagram or on Twitter. That's at Trends on SABC using the hashtag SABC News. Throughout the course of global history, humans have proven time and time again that a single act by a single person has the power to create change that resonates forever. Some had no money, no government support, no experience to speak in front of large crowds. The list goes on. They just saw a problem and took it upon themselves to do something about it. The coronavirus is not something the government all scientists can get rid of alone. It needs you to play your part. If we all abide by the rules, we can beat the coronavirus. The power to defeat coronavirus is in our hands. Play your part. Stay safe. We at Trends Travel pride ourselves on our ability to find the hottest venues to chill, places with good food and great energy, all the while enjoying the company of some of South Africa's finest. So this week we invited our on-air personality, Sakina Komwendo, to one of the coolest hangout spots in Joburg to get up close and personal with her. 
The city of gold remains undefeated when it comes to the perfect spots to relax and connect over good food and great company. So when the opportunity to host news anchor Sakina Kwamwendo presented itself, we couldn't say no. But first, we turn up the heat in the kitchen. The guest that I'm hosting right here today actually loves seafood. She just doesn't know yet the kind of surprises that we have for her. But for now, I am joining Chef Sibusiso as we prepare the seafood. It's just going to be me and my guests. Yeah, so we've skewed them. Then it's the sauce. For the sauce, you have to put the oil first. Yeah. And put them on top, then put the sauce. So guys, earlier on I hinted that I'm going to be hosting a very close colleague of ours. She is a media darling, a veteran, an icon, an entire icon in the kitchen today. Today we are making seafood. She did say her favorite meal is seafood. So she is right here. Let me officially bring her to the table. Hello. 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 Hi. Yes, she is. Ladies and gentlemen, Sakina Kamwendo. <laughs> well, you know what? Thanks yes. for having me. Always mm -hmm. watching. Always, you know, very envious of what other people are doing and getting to eat. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's an absolute honor and a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you so much. You know, our viewers, they know in studio, you know, you normally don't have the headgear and the mask, but today she's going to be working, guys. So first things first, we're going to put the glass on. There we go. Uh, I, I must just confess right up front. Um, not my favorite place to be. The kitchen. Um, so okay. what do I do? Do I just put so it on? So come, you come close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Woo! Aha! You know what? It's already getting hot in the kitchen. Mm. I'm impressed with what you're doing. I'm about to just turn on the heat. It's gonna get very exciting. <laughs> we are taking this conversation <laughs> outside. It's Heritage Month. First things first. Tell me. What makes you proud in South African? I don't even think about it like that because I am. I'm South African in every fiber of my being. Everything that I do, everything that I am is proudly South African. You know, you, you, you said to me, you know, it's Heritage Month and um, my one excuse would be to come here and coming straight from work. So a bit of a problem in getting a wardrobe. But, 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 that's not true you know this is me this is who i am every day this is how i dress i wear long flowy dresses that that's my thing that's your um, heritage not my heritage per se yeah. because i think you know the, the heritage would be influenced by all the beings that went into making this beach mm. you know going down the ancestral lines uh, but i also feel I'm, I'm not one for tokenism, so therefore, when we talk about Heritage Month, um, it cannot be that I dress up in some outfit on the 24th of September and say, I'm proudly whatever I am. Um, what is your favorite moment or your favorite interview uh, that you've done over the years? There are obviously those that really have just gone viral on social media. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the thing for me is, as long as it's a job well done, you know, as long as you've done the work, you've done the research, you did the spade work, you prepared for the interview, and it goes off well, that's that. Because it never goes old. You, I still have those butterflies every day for every interview. You love to travel. Oh my goodness. So now that we can do local travel, what are the places that you've been to already? Well, I've already been to Limpopo and I went to Euphoria and uh, it was just absolutely fabulous to get out because the cabin fever was yeah. getting to me. I needed to see other people. I needed to take a drive yes. just further than SABC yes. and the shops, you yeah. know. Can I just go beyond the Gauteng border? Let's pause that <laughs> and ask our waiter to bring our food. Hello. 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 Good bag. Wow. Very that looks flatter. different from what we were doing. Mm. There it is. Oh, this is our chicken. Very, very. Mm -hmm. These are our ribs. Do you have a favorite song? 
I love music. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love music. Love to sing along. I love the ballads. So, you have a favorite artist? I love Bruno Mars. Hi! <laughs> Did you just say Bruno Mars? I just said Bruno Mars. I love Bruno Mars. Ah, I, I need to talk to you again. Mars. I love that. Uh, can you please harmonize just one song by Bruno Mars? Ah, hi, hi, hello. amazing. Just the way you are. Dating back some 100,000 years, the Wakolo Caves, located inland of Margate on the KwaZulu Natal south coast, was once open rock shelters for indigenous sand communities, with the history of these people echoed in the rock paintings evident today. These caves serve as a double whammy today, as apart from being Heritage Month, September is also Tourism Month. We get a reminder of the rich heritage of the region and get a full tour of the caves as KZN officially launches its tourism campaign. The hidden caves at Kwakolo on the south coast of KwaZulu-Natal form part of the rural experience you get when visiting the province. Situated on the side of a deep gorge, the recently discovered caves with sand paintings have been around for a hundred thousand years, but have only recently been opened to visitors. Tourists can access them safely by means of harnesses and cables. Visitors are kitted in safety gear and hooked to cables, allowing them to walk safely along the mountain path. After walking a few kilometers to the top, it's time to fully explore the large cave. Once inside the Guadalupe Caves, you are taken on a journey back in time, experiencing their way of life. And looking outside, you get some of the most magnificent views in the region, such as the gorge and Lake Eland. If you have no fear of heights, then the caves could be a perfect outing. It's not over yet, but while we take a short break, why don't you use this time to like, follow, and comment on our social media pages. You can find us on Instagram or on Twitter. That's on Trends on SABC. In the trenches of business, don't lose sight of the bigger picture. With NetBank's investment expertise, we'll help structure innovative solutions that will provide optimal returns. To guide your growth, search NetBank Bigger Picture Business Banking. Did you know that as a Valid TV license holder, you can now win your share of half a million rand in daily prizes? Yes, you only have to renew or pay your domestic TV license. Then dial star 120 star 45887 hash or visit tvlicgames.co.za and take a chance at our Wheel of Fortune Spin and Win or Scratch Pad. Enter to win! Award-winning giveaways such as airtime, shopping vouchers and household appliances. Dial star 120 star 45887 hash or visit tvlicgames.co.za to enter now. Terms and conditions apply. USSD, 20 cents per 20 seconds, 1 rand 50 per entry. T's and C's apply. TV licenses, making more content possible every day. Hashtag made possible by you. Set against the backdrop of the forced removals of the residents of District 6 comes a heart-wrenching fictional story of a lifetime friendship. Written by former journalist and anti-apartheid activist Anton Fisher, the powerful short film Address Unknown follows the close friendship of postman Joey and his childhood friend E.B., which survives the brutality of apartheid government's ruthless evictions. In February 1966, the apartheid government declared that a suburb of Cape Town to be a whites-only area. This meant that tens of thousands of black, colored, and Indian South Africans who called this place home needed to be forcibly removed and taken to informal settlements on the outskirts of the city. Roughly 70,000 lives were destroyed by that act, simply because of the color of their skins. Many died of broken hearts. 
but so few know of the inside of this atrocity. The people, the stories, the impact. And while we can never go back and limited archival footage exists, there comes a fictional story that uses these real events as the backdrop for us all to understand the magnitude of the forced removals of District 6. <laughs> Wat die is aan ons plek. Ons hart en ons ziel leven in die plek. Address of Unknown was written by Anton Fischer. He's the co-producer as well. And I think it came about from his own life experiences as well as you know, having met the postman, one of the last postmen of District 6, Zane Young. And so in speaking to Zane, um, he developed the story of Address Unknown. I always wanted to write a story about District 6. Uh, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And then, through my research, I came across Zane Young, who's next to me here, who is a former postman of District 6. And during the chat with him, I realized the trauma that the postman suffered in District 6 when houses were being demolished and when people were disappearing. It's really a story about the postman and his friend, Joey and Ibi, and how the bond of friendship gets broken and how the bond of friendship then gets restored. It's a very simple story about friendship. Although the story is a fictional body of work, there exists an interweaving of real events and actual places to add authenticity. Obviously, it's an interpretation of events, but we try to stay as close to the fact as possible. There's a quick shot of um, Hanover Street in the in the film and that is an original street sign. I mean the houses where we shot are also part of District 6 and they have national heritage status. So um, even though yes it's fiction we we try to blend elements as, mu as much as possible. The short film in part was made as a voice to the real people of District 6 an acknowledgement of the lesser publicized evils of apartheid, the emotional turmoil that existed within the atrocities of the regime. It's not just a story of a people who were physically removed. You think you just pick up your bags and move, but actually what's happening is that your entire community has changed. You're being moved to a place that you don't know. You don't know the routines. You don't know the area very well. You don't know where the nearest shop is. You know, and, and especially the older generation during that time, I mean, they were so used to waking up in the morning and going to their neighbor, getting, a, um, you know, some biscuits or milk from them, some sugar. But, and then suddenly that entire world is shifted. You no longer have that. And I think a lot of people sat with heartbreak. Their hearts were just broken because their community was shattered. The people that they loved, that they spent time with on a daily basis, were no longer there. And I think that's it's such an important thing that I think a lot of people overlooked was that a lot of people just died of, of heartbreak. It's for Ghana, it's for West Africa, it's for Africa, and it's for the whole world. Its sensitive and emotive universal themes have resonated with film critics and film festival goers on both a local and global scale, giving it a greater wingspan. The film had its world premiere with the Black Star International Film Festival, which is based in the US. And, um, but it was still an online screening, so anyone in the world could you know, buy a ticket and participate. And then it's having its local screening currently with the Durban International Film Festival, which is also online. So people can still get tickets up until the 20th of September to watch the film. And we're so excited, we were told only yesterday that the film is the most viewed film on the festival platform just after opening night. So I understand the Durban, plat um, Durban platform is that it screams the film, but has a 600 viewership cap on the film. So the film is online either until the 20th or until it reaches the 600 viewership yeah. cap.
we hope that as soon as we can that we'll have that special screening with the district 6 museum the impact of the only 24 minute address unknown is its legacy giving a picture and a story to the empty rooms and demolished houses allowing the next generation to understand the conflict that exists for many of their parents who had to make the apartheid house they were forced into into a home for their families i think this is an incredible film in the sense that it is the first fiction no story about District 6. So it is making history at this point. And I, I actually posted something on my uh, Facebook this morning about it. People are looking for content like this. People are interested in, in, in what has happened. Because I, I think as a young person as well, we, we don't know precisely and, and having researched it and not finding so much on District 6 and you know the, what has happened there. The archival nature of a film like this is incredible for um, young people to be able to to have an in into the past. And that's really where the film hit for me, is that I went, wow, there is something that a new generation can look at and figure out what has happened in South Africa. Because we still sit with those repercussions today. And that's important that I think we understand where it all stemmed from and how people have begun to deal with it. And that's where I think the film is really powerful. It's a wrap from the entire Trends Travel team, coming to you today from Luffy D. Boutique. If that name sounds familiar, it's because we did a bit of a showcase of her work on last week's show. If for some reason you missed it, you can mosey on over to YouTube and catch up on all missed episodes. I'm Louise Scovel saying that lockdown restrictions may have been eased, but the virus is still dangerous. So continue to social distance, continue wearing a mask, and continue to sanitize. Until next week, stay safe and stay healthy.